my favorite things to do while viewing Baywatch is to make up various ways that Eddie could be abused, so it works out well when the episode does it for me. And thank god, this episode not only focuses on Eddie, but also features a subplot about Trevor, making it a double whammy of favorite Baywatch Season 1 characters. Okay, that's a lie. They're all my favorites. And yeah, I think it's a pretty good sign when we're four episodes in, and this is the second episode with Wave in the title. A second wave, if you will. Oh well, it's not like I'm going with the German titles at least. The land where everything must be matter of fact and literal. Do not give me this wordplay, just tell me what happens. I can't do a German accent, I apologize. So hey, did you know David Spade was in an episode of Baywatch in his third role ever? Well now you do! And fittingly enough, the first scene in this is some completely ridiculous thing where this group of no-gooders wants to burn his board in a surf sacrifice. This is apparently supposed to appease some sort of higher being that will provide them with big waves. I'm not sure what deity this is supposed to appeal to. Chet, the god of pre-stardom slogs? Virgin surfboard? A virgin surfer? It's your choice. Would you get with the California Swing Beach? Virgin surfboard burning is a well-respected custom. Come on, Beach. This is a perfectly acceptable reason to threaten someone's life. Apparently the sacrifice works, because the waves are totally bitchin' the next day. After some time, Shawnee raises the flag, signaling it's time for surfers to come back in and make room for swimmers. We're not going in because of some squid sucking lifeguard. This guy is like the best generic asshole with a square-shaped head they've had on the show so far. Who are you talking to, Pops? Why don't you take the clue, Grandpa, and get your ugly elephant gun out of my water? Hey, you guys! Flash up! Take your boards out of the water and into the sand! I can help Shawnee out! But it turns out that Skunkhead is an old enemy of Eddie's. Dun-dun-dun! Don't look at me, Shawnee! <laughs> on Lincoln, there's a bar called Labels. It's the kind of place we used to trash on a Friday night. Stop by sometime. Buy me a drink. In fact, buy me three years worth of drinks, because that's what you cost me. Whoa, sudden mood whiplash. Hey, buddy, how's it going? How's it going for me? Well, pretty awful. All I got to say to you is see you in the next life. Yeah, now that I know the color of your shorts, you can't hide, pal! You've been fortunate because I suffer from face blindness, but now that I know the color of your shorts, your history. <laughs> hey, Mitch, put these shorts on. Hey, thanks, pal. Meanwhile, Craig is getting used to lawyering from home as Eddie continually annoys him. Craig is too wholesome and nice to say anything about Eddie's mooching, but wait until he gets into his Werther's Originals, then we'll see how nice he is. I figure you'll get around to opening up to me. Me too. Can I borrow a cup of family from you? I appreciate the double dose of Everybody Hates Eddie Baywatch. Thanks a bunch. Slimo McMullet shows up at the Pomeroy place to slink around and stir things evilly. I'm not sure how he knew where Eddie was living, but we'll assume Eddie has a tag on him with his name and address in case he gets lost. I'm warning you, Jimmy. You keep your face out of my life. Or what? You gonna cry? <laughs> <laughs> up there, just the taste of things to come. Good god, what's next? Nefarious vacuuming? Meanwhile, did someone ask what Trevor was doing? Oh, nothing. Just listening to his sweet boombox being Australian but rhythmic. He doesn't have time to enforce rules or whatever. So, Lieutenant, you can take your procedures and shove them. In case you're wondering about Mitch, he's gonna spend much of the episode being sweaty and disgusting. So Trevor's got a girlfriend now, I guess. She's also on Law and Order. Yeah, I don't watch Law and Order. He likes me there. He says I make him feel young. Young, huh? Well, I think you should be spending more time considering how you make me feel, like tonight. Ugh, be still, my Australian but beating heart. You let me check with... Daddy? <laughs> not jailbait, sweetheart. You don't need daddy's consent. Daddy, you remember Trevor, don't you? Hello? Oi, who knew girls came with baggage like family? Doesn't he know I'm on cereal boxes back home? I got things in my mind. Great, let's hear about them. Shorts and his gang decide to cause trouble for Eddie at work, which is good news for me. Look at David Spade, he's so into it. <laughs> You're worse than mimes! Ow! 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 Kramer, you're lucky I'm not your lieutenant. I'd drop kick you right out of here. Do it, do it, do it! 
Eddie is suspended, and Captain Thorpe makes his feelings clear. We don't have room for loners. We don't have room for hotheads. And I don't know why you didn't just fire it. Eddie is such a lone wolf. Check out his smoldering eyes. Looks like it's time for him to do some serious thinking via montage. Aw, oh, I wish I could be as cool as Mitch. That is some intense acid wash, let me tell you. Keep trying to sell us on this show, it is pretty comical. That's like trying to tell us David Spade is some intimidating pu- oh wait. Aw oh, no, Baywatch, no! No one ever wanted to see this. Now that I've done some montage training, I'm ready for- oh, he's beating me up again! Looks like Eddie learned a valuable lesson from his suspension. This guy picks him up like he's a doll. What does he weigh, like 10 pounds? Eddie still doesn't want to tell anyone what's going on for some reason, even though there's no real reason to hide that the other guy is a dick. You probably could save everyone a lot of trouble if you weren't such a weenie, Eddie, but <gasps> is that Mitch in a stripy little boy's t-shirt carrying a mug of whoop-ass? Your burgers are so fired, pal. It turns out Eddie and Mullet Nuts were foster family bitch buddies who got into trouble together until Buzz Butkins decided to rob a liquor store and Eddie stopped him, landing him in Juvenile Hall for three years. This happened when they were 16. Remember, Eddie is still a teenager. <laughs> Time to hang up the gloves, champ. Yeah, thanks for that condescending piece of fatherly advice, Craig. <laughs> champ, good one, buddy. Suspension's over. What? While this is going on, this is Trevor. Trevor, tell us another one. <laughs> hey, at least I'm not Eddie. <laughs> oh my god, that bow tie. I love this man. It turns out his girlfriend's dad invited him to the party to humiliate him because he's got a lifeguard prejudice. I just wanted to show you what it would be like going out into society with a lifeguard on your arm. Let me show you. Hey, Trevor. Don't! Gadzooks! Little did she know, getting into the water equals instant death. I'm pretty sure if you aren't a lifeguard and you go past standing water, you're in the forget-how-to-swim zone. And then a magnificent underwear and socks dive from Trevor. Even though he rescues her, she ends up being taken to the hospital for secondary drowning, which is basically when you inhale seawater and the body responds by flushing out the lungs and drowning you in your own body fluid. So there's your fun fact for the day! Trevor didn't take her to the hospital to get that checked out, and in fact doesn't know what secondary drowning is, which would seem like something someone who lifeguards next to an ocean should know. Where the hell did he get certified? Must have passed his test by being Australian but charming. Is the soundtrack trapped in a closet or something? It turns out the girlfriend was using Trevor to scare her dad so she could go to New York and model. This is all kind of out of nowhere because they didn't really do much with her. Boy, looks like I learned my lesson today about models. In hot and sweaty Mitchland, it turns out the lieutenant retest he was training for wasn't a physical exam, it was a written test. Aw, oh, sing! Come on, guys, this is just cruel. Mitch has a hard enough time figuring out how many burgers he can eat in one hour. I'm pretty sure he thinks the lifesavers they use are just large, inflated versions of the candy. I passed? Look at the childlike wonder on his face. Can't fault him for that. Everybody flunked. And since I can't run my beaches without lieutenants, I guess I'll have to grade on the curve. <laughs> Two highly unrealistic things happen next. The first is Shawnee asking Eddie to have some dinner with her. The second is Ratface and his goons trapping Eddie and Shawnee in their tower and attempting to burn them alive. Stunt doubles, away! I grabbed you, counts as my save! Looks like the gloves are off, eh, champ? <laughs> you broke my collarbone. Next time on Baywatch. More stupid kids. And modern day pirates? Plus Shawnee and Eddie annoy each other. All that and more next time. Mm -hmm.